hi guys you're welcome to another video today my name is tolumi abiola oyedeji and you already know i am your fashion teacher today's video is a continuation from the previous video we started we're making this beautiful beautiful gorgeous jacket and skirt in the previous video we started with the skirt i showed you how to cut a full beautiful circle you know for the skirt how to cut the band we did it together and i hope you've created your skirt this is the skirt that i did from the previous video it looks really full it's a nice 360 skirt right and then you'll be seeing it properly you know on our model after this class i'm gonna make her put it on with the jacket and you're gonna fall in love with it now in the video today we're gonna be making the jacket that's what we're gonna be making we've done the skirt now it's time to make the jacket and i am going right to work now the measurements that you need to create the jacket you need your bust measurements your waist measurement you may need the hip measurement depending on the length of the jacket if your jacket is going to get to maybe your upper hip or somewhere around your hip you definitely need your hip measurement so it's not slim on your hip but if it's just going to be a short jacket then you can do without the hip measurement you would also need your length to your under bust your nip to bust points if you would like your jacket to be nicely shaped you need the length of your jacket as well you need your arm width and then you need your sleeve length these are the basic measurements that you need to make your jacket so get your measurements ready your scissors your temple and your fabric about two to three yards of fabric should be enough for you now you're going to need lining it's important to line your jacket so it can have some structure and you know sit well on your body so you will want to line your jacket also you will also need what we call estate i'm going to be showing you during the course of this video and you need that for the lapel of your jacket you know so that it can stay and it's just not you know flipping over you need it to have some structure so you need the estate the estate can also be called the fusible interlining and that's the lightweight one you're using the lightest weight fusible interlining so if you put in that on online website just type in fusible interlining you'll see options you want to buy a fabric based one you don't want to buy a paper based one you want to buy a fabric based one if you're going to the local market you can just call it estate or bff state they'll give it to you so guys let's go into the cutting and the making of our beautiful jacket so we're on to the cutting and i'm just going to be doing some cutting now we have the bust measurement to be 35 waist measurement to be 28 and then the hip measurement is actually 39 but for our um the jacket we're doing is a pretty short one so we really don't need to work with the hip measurement because the length of the jacket is just about 23 you know so we do not need to work with, with the measurement of the hip we only need to work with a bust measurement you know and that should be fine for us so i am going to be cutting the front part separately and the backs separately because that's the easiest way we can do this that you will understand properly so we're going to start with the cutting of the back if the old bust measurement is 36 inches half of the bust for the back is going to be 18 inches and for the front is going to be another 18 inches now for the 18 inches which is the one for the back we are going to be adding some allowances and we're going to be adding a total of seven inches for our allowance and i'm going to explain what the seven inches is for now we need sewing allowance on both sides left and right side of the back so that's two inches one inch on both sides that's two inches now we're going to be putting lining on this jacket and we're going to be turning the lining on the side and we'll need half inch on each side to turn in the lining so that's another one inch half inch on both sides that's another one inch so two plus one is already three now um, we're going to be putting that at the back and the way we're going to do that the dart the way we're going to do the dart is going to be like princess dart so we need to cut it out entirely and join it back together so for the dart we're adding half inch for each dart there's going to be two dots you know on the back so the dart on the left half inch on each side that's one the dart on the right half inch on each side that's one so it's a total of two inches for the dart that makes it five inches and then on the center back which is the middle of the back we're going to do some shaping and cut it out so we have one inch on each side of the back so that's a total of seven inches for all the allowances that we are using for this jacket for the back so 
18 inches plus 7 inches is giving us 25 inches so the width that we need for the back is 25 inches now the length of the jacket again is 23 inches if we're adding one inch to the front and one inch to the back we're going to have 25 so essentially we're cutting 25 inches width by 25 inches length and that's the first thing i am going to cut So what I have here is my 25 inches width by my 25 inches length. Now I'm going to fold my 25 inches width into two. It's the first thing I do. I fold it into two. And then now I am going to, this is going to be my center back. I can decide to open it now or just leave it. Any one is fine. Now um, this is the center, I remember. Now we're going to be doing our shaping. Now instead of doing the regular three, and eight that we always do we are going to be doing four and nine so the first thing you mark is four inches now we do four and nine because there's one inch on this center back for allowance so we do four and then five so if you look at it this is four and nine inches yeah yeah now on the nine inches instead of doing the regular one and a half that we do we are going to be doing one inch so we are only marking one inch here now you're going to take a ruler and then we're going to be joining this together with a ruler and draw the slant line all the way down so you see one inch on the nine inch point and then um, take the four inch to join it and draw the slant all the way down now for the arm all of um, this person i am going to be using just about 11 inches for the arm or normally for an arm hole of someone with bust 36 I will work with about 10 inches or 10 and a half but because this is a jacket for a jacket especially one that is lined you need the arm hole to be very free so I am just going to make it 11 inches for the arm hole here so 11 inches for the arm hole here another measurement that um, I did not uh, mention or talk about um, is the shoulder measurement. You need a shoulder measurement for this as well. So a shoulder is 16 inches. Now this shoulder measurement, you're going to subtract one from it. 16 inches minus one is 15. Divided by two, you have seven and a half. So um, the width here is going to be seven and a half. The total here is going to be seven and a half. So here, even though I have four here, I'm going to subtract the one because the one actually is an allowance. So it's going to be three really at the end of the day. Now I am going to now mark the seven and a half here. So this is where the seven and a half point is this is a seven and a half point even though air is four one inch out of it is for allowance so instead of measuring the all four i've measured three then from the three i measured seven and a half so this is where my seven and a half point is now i'm going to join the seven and a half point to the arm all point And you see, my arm all up for the back is all done and set up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is mark my nip to waist. Nip to waist for this person is about 16 inches for this person. Now, I'm going to add one inch to it. I'm going to add one inch to it, which makes it 17. So, I am marking the 17 inch point. This is my 17 inch point. I'm going to draw this is my 17 inch point i'm going to draw a straight line to join the markings together so i've joined a straight line to join the markings together now from this waist point i mark one inch down from this waist point i mark three quarter three quarter of an inch from that point and this is it so one inch down after the waist three quarter of an inch and then what i do is that I am going to mark six inches from the waist as well the six inches from the waist don't get confused I'm gonna say again now from this waist mark one inch down three quarter inwards and this is the point of intersection of this marking from the waist as well mark six inches downwards right this is the point that six inches downwards now I'm gonna take my ruler 
and join that point of intersection to the six inch point this way right so point of as intersection to the six inch point now we're going to come back to that remember that we have used 11 for um the length of the arm or that was what we got here 11 you come to this part as well and um, mark the same 11 so you're going to join the point of intersection to this 11 point and the shaping at the back is done. This shaping that we have done is going to make this jacket to be flat at the back. It's going to follow the beautiful curves at the back and it's going to make everything look nice. So this shaping at the back is very important. Now we've done the shaping at the back. We need to put in our dart and the shaping on the side as well. Now let's start with the shaping on the side and we're going to be imputing our waist measurement now. Now the waist measurement is 28 inches. Now remember that we are working with um, the back measurement now and the back has been folded into two. So if half of um, the measurement was 14 inches, half of the back is now going to be seven. So really we are working with seven inches. Now to this seven, we can add our basic allowances as well. Now to this seven, we're going to add our lining allowance. Lining allowance is half inch for each side. Sewing allowance is one inch for each side, which makes everything to be one and half. Now center back is another one inch which makes it to be two and a half and also our dart is one inch which makes it to be three and a half total allowance for the back before was seven inches half of it is going to be three and a half inches so to our seven inches we're adding three and a half so basically i'm going to be measuring ten and a half so ten and a half so this is ten and a half from this point here, I mark 10 and a half. So 10 and a half for the measurement of my waist. Now I can take this from the armhole, join the bust to the waist measurement here. Then from the waist measurement, I take it out to the end of the length of the jacket. So you see, this is the shape. Now we're almost done. The only thing that we have to do now is the dart now how do we do the dart the first thing you need to do is find halfway of the waist measurement so if everything is ten and a half it means halfway is going to be about five one quarter so this is the marking of the five one quarter now on the five one quarter you need to mark half inch to either side half inch to the left and half inch to the right right because that is usually half inch so half inch to the left and half inch to the side now you're going to elongate this um, center line the center line you need to make it long now how long is this dart going to be your dart is going to be as long as the 11 inches on this upper part so if this is the 11 inch line the 11 inch line is the arm o line. You're going to make your dart to start from there. So the eye point of your dart is going to go from that waist to the 11 inches there and A as well. So you see that's the eye point of the dart at the back. And then for the lower part, it's going to be as long as 6 inches on the lower part. 6 inches on the lower part. So you take this to come here and come here. So the main dart has been done. Now we are going to be making a princess dart. So what we need to do, sorry, I'm turning this upside down. What you need to do now is find halfway on this arm o line. So if I go and measure everything, I have about 11 inches. Halfway is going to be five and a half. Now for the back, you need to move about one and a half inches upward one and a half inches higher than halfway then at that point i'm going to join that point to this dart so you see the shape i have now your shape must not be curvy so don't come like this if you do that it will have a funny indent at the back don't do that so from that point you just take it like this that is what your back is going to look like so i hope you can see the shape now we are almost done the only thing left for us to do at the back is for us to shape the neck depth for this 
jacket you don't want your neck depth to be low it needs to be high so i am just going to be using two inches for the depth of the back and um, i'm going to shape it to the four inches which is just right here i'm shaping it to the four inches remember the four inches if we take out the allowance we'll just be left with three inches so essentially the width of the neck at the back is three inches you know so i just shape it like that and you can see we are entirely done with the shaping now we have the center back here we have the side we have the dart and we have the princess so now i am going to be cutting it all now i'm going to cut exactly on the line here so for the arm or when you're cutting the arm or remember to leave some allowance so that when you are done sewing it can come back to this original line the next thing that we're going to do is to cut the dart remember we already added half inch for the dart allowance in our measurements so it's okay when you're cutting your dart don't bother to leave any just cut straight it's fine we already calculated the allowance that we're going to use to join it back you know with um, our main calculations so you can just go ahead and cut so with that our back piece is done this is what the back of the jacket should look like if you want to do any shaping on the side you can do the shaping on the side and just do a curve you know if you want the curve so we are now going to move over to the front piece 